Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In today's video, I'm going to talk about WGU's new combined bachelor's and master's of IT accelerated program. I've had a lot of requests to review this new program, so I thought I would go ahead and make a video and do a deep dive on it. So that's what we're going to do today. Just to give you an idea of what to expect in this video, I'm going to do a super brief overview of WGU. In case some people don't know what it is, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the bachelor's master's accelerated program. I'm going to be doing a deep dive comparison of the accelerated program against the original individual bachelor and master's degree, like the two individual counterparts. I'll talk about a strategy that you can do to save a lot of money if you decide to go through with this program. And then I'll kind of give my final opinion on whether or not I think it's actually worth it to go through with this. And I'll say something pretty thought provoking in that section. So if you're impatient, just skip ahead to the last section. Otherwise, just put on 2x and watch it all the way through because I feel like it's one of those videos where I want to say, like, well, everything's important. Before we get started, in case you don't know, I do have three degrees from WGU. I have like the BS in IT general, which we're going to kind of talk about in this video a little bit. I have the master's in cybersecurity, and then I have another BS in comp sci from WGU. So I have a pretty good idea of how WG works and how the classes are and everything. So that's just a bit of background there. So getting right into it, brief overview of WGU. WGU is basically an accredited online college. They offer a bunch of different degrees in a bunch of different areas, such as health, business, IT, and education. The whole premise and the whole idea with them is you pay for like one term at a time, which is six months, and then you can complete as many classes as you can in that six month time period. And then you pay for the next term and you keep doing that until you graduate. So theoretically, if you can do all your classes in six months, then you get a degree after only paying for one term. So it's like self-paced and you can potentially save a lot of money. So that's WGU. And then the program we're going to talk about, basically they came out with a newish program where it takes the BS in IT general and then the masters in IT management and kind of combines it into one program where you can theoretically save some time and money and it's kind of a streamlined process. So we're going to kind of dive into that today and see like exactly like what they changed and like what they took out, like why you might be able to save money versus the two individual degrees. So getting right into the deep dive, we're going to use this sheet a little bit later in the video. I'll kind of explain what this is and there's a link to this in the description. So if you want to kind of look at it on your own monitor while you watch the video, just click the link and you'll open this up. So basically I'll just explain this super quick. So this tab down here, this tab called Accelerated, this is kind of the new accelerated program where it combines both the bachelor's and the master's into one. And this column here is the course ID, of course. And this level column represents whether or not each class is undergrad level or graduate. So if we scroll down toward the bottom, you, know, you can see graduate and I kind of color coded them. So these are all the classes in the program. Of course, units is how many credits or units it is. And then of course, this course name and then the certificate that's associated with the course that you'll earn by completing the course. And then this study.com equivalent, but I'll kind of talk about this a little bit more later. And also this tab down here, if you click BSIT, MSIT, these are like the two original degrees, right? So this is the original bachelor's degree standalone and this, these graduate ones, this is the original master's standalone. So basically getting into the deep dive comparison of these two, I just essentially like copied everything here, copied everything here, and then I pasted it into this diff checker here. And this diff checker kind of shows us the actual difference between the two. So the difference between like the, the old courses on the left, so the individual bachelors and the individual masters on the left versus the combined program here on the right. And I know this is really hard to look at. Um, so just use a link in the description. Um, I gave a link where you can kind of click on it and then you can zoom in and like see it a little bit better on your own. And then I'll kind of go through this here and then really break down the difference between the, these two degrees and kind of see what you can save, if anything. So basically what we're looking at um, on the left, again, these are the individual degrees. So all these undergrad classes, this was part of the original bachelor's and all these graduate classes, this is part of the original master's. And then the right side, again, this is the new combined kind of streamlined course. And we can see like right off the bat, the first column has 46 lines or 46 total classes. And the, the streamlined combined program has 42 classes. So it looks like there's four less classes. We can kind of just see that right off the bat, the, the combined program is four less classes. So let's kind of look at the difference between the classes here. So it looks like the first three are the same, like this politics, algebra, staff. And then we can see this is the old bachelor's degree. It looks like the new streamlined program doesn't have this C-176 class, this business of IT project management. However, if we scroll down a little bit, there's like a new version of that, which is C-783 project management. And I believe this this is the new streamlined one. It This actually covers the CAPM cert uh, from PMI, I believe, like project 
Manager Institute, I believe. And then this version up here is like the Project Plus. And there's a big difference between the two. Obviously, like Capim is better and there's a lot more jobs in Indeed in LinkedIn that reference Capim over Project Plus. So that's one improvement that they made. We scroll down a little bit more. The next five classes are the same. And it looks like this current and emerging technology, C962 undergrad, this undergrad current and emerging technology didn't exist in the original bachelor's degree. Uh, but if we scroll down, we can see in the graduate degree, like the old MS of IT management, you can see it's down here. So it looks like they took this class from the old master's and then they just added it to the bachelor's bachelor's curriculum of the new combined accelerated program. So I don't know if the course content is any different, but they just like shuffled it around, it looks like. And next two classes are the same. And it looks like the new accelerated program is missing this emerging technologies. But again, it looks like the old program had emerging technologies in undergrad, and then they had current in emerging technologies in the graduate program. So it looks like they just like scrapped emerging technologies in the new accelerated program, and then um, just added current and emerging if that makes sense. That's a little bit confusing, but looks like they had two similar courses here and they just like scrapped one of them and then used current and emerging technologies. So scroll down a little bit, the next three are the same. And then this IT management class, it looks like this, this IT management used to be in the graduate cur curriculum. So it looks like they pulled it out of here and then made it into part of the undergrad curriculum for the new program. And then it doesn't look like there's information systems management anymore in the new program, I don't believe. Scrolling down a bit more, looks like all these classes are the same between the two. It looks like there's some, a lot of generals are the same and a lot of the core technology classes are the same. Uh, here we get to the project management class. Uh, we talked about this a little bit already. They, it looks like they just pulled it from the masters of IT management and put it into the undergrad curriculum. Again, this is the CAPM certification. So they just kind of like got rid of Project Plus and then threw CAPM into the undergrad curriculum. Uh, next few classes, all the same. This class is missing, which was current and emerging technologies. But remember, they moved that up here into the undergrad curriculum. Financial management is the same. This information technology management is missing from the graduate curriculum, but it looks like they added it to undergrad up here. Next for the same. Uh, again, this project management and technical communication are missing. But actually, again, project management got folded into the undergrad curriculum. And then this technical communication, um, there's actually two versions of this class, I believe. One is an undergrad version, which was here. And then this one is a graduate version, I believe. Yes, I believe that's what they did. So it looks like they it looks like they just got rid of one of the technical communications courses and then just kind of threw it away. And then maybe they threw the, the graduate one into the undergrad curriculum of the new kind of accelerated program. Uh, capstones are Capstones for both of these are the same. Like a nice summary of what they did. It looks like they dropped Project Plus and then they moved Capum up into the undergrad curriculum. They dropped one of the technical communications classes and I think they shuffled a few other classes around. Like they dropped one of the emerging technology classes. So there's like four less classes in the combined accelerated program than the two individual degrees. Four classes is pretty significant. If you're like dead set on getting like BSIT and BSITM, obviously it's a no brainer to go with the accelerated program because four courses can potentially be a whole term depending on your speed and a whole term is about $3,500. So it's like definitely worth it. But there, there's other things to consider. So I'm going to get right into how to potentially save a lot of money if you decide to go with this program. So going back to the screen, again, there's a link in the description for all of these. So if you want to click it and follow along, you can. Basically, there's one, there's a strategy that you can do where you can do certain courses outside of WGU that are equivalent to your WGU courses. And then you kind of transfer those in when you enroll. And then it kind of knocks them off of your degree so you don't have to do them once you actually register at WGU. So I'll kind of talk about that and then we'll kind of quantify the savings that you can potentially earn. And I'll talk about some of the drawbacks of doing this too. So again, this spreadsheet here, this is just basically a list of classes in the accelerated bachelor's and master's program. And this column here is a study.com column. Basically, the idea with this is you can take these classes from study.com and you earn college credit for them. And then when you register, you can transfer the classes in and it knocks them off of WGU, right? So I just put links here. You can kind of look at them and we'll talk about what the class is and like what's covered. And generally speaking, if you're wondering like how long the study.com classes take to take to complete, it really depends on you. For me, I took discrete mathematics and scripting and programming from study.com and each, each one of those took less than a week. Uh, granted, I'm like pretty fast at those and I it was stuff that I kind of already knew how to do a little bit. Um, so your mileage may vary, right? It could be, you know, if you have a lot of responsibilities and kids, 
could take like one month per class. It just depends, right? So basically there's about 20 classes that you can do at study.com, like outside of WGU and transfer them in. So assuming you did all of those, this is what your list of classes looks like right now. And if you happen to do all the courses outside outside of study.com, your list of classes will look something like this. It's much less. So getting into like how this might potentially save money, um, there's a tab down here called SDC savings where I kind of break it down a little bit. So I'll kind of explain this here. So basically looking over here on the left, um, study.com, the undergrad portion costs about $3,600 every single term. So one term is six months. If you kind of divide a term by six, you'll end up with WG costs about $604 a month, give or take a few dollars and cents. But with study.com, if you're doing two classes a month at study.com, study.com only costs $200, which is about a third of that, right? Um, if you do four classes a month at study.com, it's a bit more, it's $340. So I kind of broke down three different scenarios here. Assuming no matter how many classes you do per month at WGU, the cost is always the same. It's always $3,600 per term or about $600 per month. So assuming that you did like four classes per month from study.com, every six months you spend about $2,000 where at WGU you would spend $3,600, in which case you would save you know, about $1,600 or a little bit less. And this is like breakneck speed, by the way, like four classes per month at study.com is pretty fast, but still you would finish the degree relatively relatively quickly and you would save about $1,500 a month. In this case, assuming you do only two classes a month at study.com, since study.com is about $200 a month for six months, that's $1,200. And then the difference between WGU cost and study.com cost for six, six months ends up being about $2,400 savings, which is like pretty crazy to be honest. And again, if you do the same thing for instead of six months, 12 months, your savings essentially doubles to about $4,800 savings. And basically the idea is if you really want to like min max and like save as much money as possible, you would pretty much do as many classes from study.com as you can before transferring them into WGU. And then once you register at WGU, you'll only be paying that you know, $3,600 to $4,000 per term for fewer terms, right? Because you did most of the classes already outside. And also I should mention, if you use this code at checkout, Josh Matacor, you can get 30% off of your study.com fee. So it ends up being like $160 per month, right? So it's pretty good. But the one kind of drawback, I guess, of you using study.com is you don't really have a lot of like humans and like network of course instructors to leverage if you're having problems with classes. Whereas WGU, it's more expensive, but there's like a reason for that because you have a whole network of like live humans that you can tap into if you need help with certain classes or, or anything like this. Granted, like the only, the only class that was like really, really hard for me at WGU where I actually used humans was discrete math too. Other than that, I didn't really leverage the course instructors that much at WGU, but it really just like depends on where you are and like what kind of interaction and resources you need to, to feel like you're satisfied, I guess, with your education. Um, for me, I did maybe two or three courses in study.com and they're pretty good. I really liked how it was laid out. There's a lot of videos and like really short quizzes at the end of each section. So it's it's pretty nice, but it really just depends on you. If you want to like min max, I would recommend using study.com because the courses are like relatively quick and they're relatively like low stress. Alternatively, you can use sophia.org and I think that it's cheaper than study.com. I just haven't used it before myself, so. Also, I wanna mention if you decide to do this, take classes at study.com and transfer them into WGU, I might recommend talking about it with your enrollment counselor just to make sure everything matches up. I did find these transfers from an actual WGU sheet where it shows like the mapping between study.com and WGU courses. So I think this is pretty accurate, but I might recommend talking to your enrollment counselor about it. I do have a video that does a super deep dive on how study.com works and how to like transfer the courses in and everything. It's like really, really detailed. So I would recommend checking out that video here. I think it will be really useful for you if you're thinking of doing this. And lastly, I want to talk about is this program even worth it? And like, should you even consider getting it? So this is a thing where I was like, I'm going to say something kind of profound that's hopefully thought provoking for you. So, so basically what you're looking at here is this, I kind of like made this up in my head but it's like, this is the reality as far as I'm concerned. This is like the 11 pillars of employment. I'll put a link for this in the description if you can't see it, but, but basically these are the things that you need to kind of consider when you're going to be doing job hunting in the future. If you want to get a job, these are all of the things you have to care about. So for example, you need like resume quality, you know, C tier, B tier, A tier, and then S tier means like super, super good. So basically you want all of these areas to be as high as they possibly can in order to get a job, whether it's an IT or essentially anything in life, right? Finishing this degree program, in my opinion, like just finishing that program and getting like that 
the bachelor's and master's for this accelerated thing in your hand, you're going to end up with some chart that looks like this in terms of like the 11 pillars of employment. So basically certification, there's a lot of relevant certs in that degree, right? Like A plus, Network plus, Security plus, ITIL, and then CAPM, which is actually pretty decent. And I think there's another one too. Uh, I think Linux LPI or something. Those are all great. There's a lot of hits for a lot of those on Indeed. And it's a decent amount of certs, right? So I gave it essentially an A tier, right? Um, degree in education, you get, you know, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, right? I, I won't get into it too much, but as long as you have a degree, it makes job hunting a bit more easy, right? It can be in history, it can be in anything, but in this case, you're getting both undergrad and then a graduate level degree. I just call that A tier, right? S tier might be something like um, multiple undergrads with an, a graduate degree or PhD or something like this, but you're pretty set, right? In terms of education and degrees. Your written communication, pretty integral for getting a job, right? With like your resume and like conveying your thoughts and ideas and skill on paper. Um, coming out of the program, you'll probably have like, you know, assuming you're starting pretty low, at least you'll get like a B tier written communication because you won't be able to pass your performance assessments unless you have good written communication. Uh, assuming you do all your own work, you'll come out with some decent improved communication skills. Technical ability, I gave this a, a solid B because you, you do, you touch on like a lot of different areas, but as far as I know, at having done so many degrees at WGU, you don't really like, for me, you don't really go deep enough to come out with A tier technical ability. That's kind of something that you have to work on like after you get out of college, in my opinion, right? This is just my opinion. All these other things, um, resume quality, there's probably some resource in WGU that will like help you with this, but it's not part of the program. So I just put zero for this, right? Uh, portfolio. I don't remember, you know, having a portfolio when I came out. So zero social network. I almost gave this like a C tier. You know, I probably should because WGU tries to give you some kind of social network. It's just not that good. And you have to work hard to like be able to take advantage of it. So if you go to Harvard or something, right, this is going to be like S tier, right? Your social network from getting a degree at Harvard, probably going to be S tier or A, a tier, the worst, probably. Experience, it doesn't really make any experience for you. Interview ability, not really, nothing. Appearance, this is like personal appearance, like being the best version of yourself in terms of like grooming and like all of those things. Obviously, you need that for a job, right? Because you have to do a Zoom interview or something like this. Does doesn't, doesn't really teach it at WGU. Consistency, this is just like how consistent you are with your habits, like applying for jobs, improving your skill and everything. So you probably, you'll probably come out of it with some consistency, but it's something you need to like maintain long-term. So if you, if you get your degree, you know, you do this program at WGU, you can come out of it expecting to have some personal stats that looks something like this. The good news about this is this is like pretty good and the hardest things to, to raise here are certifications and degrees. These are like the hardest things to like increase. The other stuff is like pretty easy to do, right? It's just resume quality. I have a bunch of videos for this. Portfolio quality. I have a good video for this, right? All the rest of the stuff is like easy to raise up after you finish your program. So I have like a lot of opinions on whether I, whether I think a graduate degree is worth it for IT. I, I have one, obviously. If you look at my resume and my videos, I got it because it was like really economical to get. But if you want to get a graduate degree, I would say this is probably worth it because the, the undergrad curriculum is good, has good certs and a lot of exposure. The graduate curriculum, I guess it's okay, but it's like really fast and cheap, more importantly. And you come out of it with like, you know, some pretty decent looking stats in the end. And all you got to do, right, is raise up these other things, which is fairly trivial compared to raising up these two, which is like pretty difficult to raise up. So all in all, if you're really interested in it and you, you really want a master's degree, this is probably one of the most economical ways to get it because for less classes and you know you can leverage study.com and reddit and all of these things to get a nice economically smart graduate degree shout out to my patrons thank you so much for supporting me and the channel i really appreciate it a lot thank you so much for watching if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing and we will see you in the next one bye bye